Here's a very interesting TPA question. As we solve this, you will see how important it is for you to properly visualize the situation, see how things look, and then you'll be able to make correct decisions. So here we're actually talking about a 12-hour analog clock. This is a clock where you have to read the time by looking at the hour hand and the minute hand, look at their positions. Let me draw one for you. Here you go. So this is where, if this is the center of the clock, you will see here the 12 mark. So this is for 12 a.m., 12 p.m., which is midnight and noon. Then you come here. This is 3 p.m. or 3 a.m. This is the 6-hour mark. This is the 9-hour mark. Now, obviously, all of the others are here. This is, for example, 1, 2. These are going to be 4 and 5. This is 7 and 8. This is nine. This is 10 and 11 till you're back to 12. Now, it's a 12-hour clock means that if you start here at 12 a.m., you'll go a full circle till you come back here at 12 p.m. And after that, you start again and you go in the entire afternoon and evening till you come back here at 12 a.m. midnight again. So, it's a 12-hour thing which is marked on 12 hours, but you're seeing all 24 hours on the same thing. Now, they describe some things about the hour hand and the minute hand. These are not unusual things and you can also figure them out yourself even if it were not given. So, if I talk about the hour hand, it says it moves at a constant rate of one revolution every 12 hours. Now, revolution is a complete circle. It's very easy to understand. If you think about the hour hand, this is where, say, it's at midnight, then 1 a.m., then 2 a.m., 3 a.m. This way you keep going. When you come back here, at 12 p.m. noon, you will see that you have covered a total of 12 hours. So for one revolution, the hour hand has covered 12 hours. Similarly, it tells us about the minute hand also. It says the minute hand also has a constant rate, one revolution in one hour. So this is where you're measuring minutes, right? So this is, say, the zero minute mark. Say, I look at 3 p.m. Then this is how 3 p.m. will have the minute hand. Then I will have the minute hand move till this position. So it's 15 more minutes. Then if it comes here, it's 30 minutes. Then 45 minutes. And and then you go back here, 60 minutes, you've made a complete circle. 60 minutes is one hour. That's why one revolution in one hour. So they've given you things that you could have figured out, but because they have given, you don't need to spend any energy in trying to figure it out. Now, they talk about a specific time here. They talk about three o'clock in the morning and they say the hands are perpendicular here. That is absolutely correct because the minute hand will be pointing here and the hour hand will be here. And I can clearly see that they are perpendicular to each other. That's how the circle is divided. You have 90, 90, 90, 90 degrees. That's how it makes a 360 degree complete when you complete one entire revolution. Okay. Now, to the nearest second, the next time they are superimposed. So here we're talking about a special situation that these two hands are superimposed. Then they describe what that means. It means that both of the hands will be pointing at the same point on the outer rim of the face. This is the outer rim, the boundary. So for both of them to be pointing to the same point means both of them are here, superimposed one over the other. So I'll draw that situation for you. So here I have my clock. I'll just randomly make them point to this point. I, I don't know what exactly the time will be because it's just M minutes and S seconds. But after three o'clock, they will both move. The hour hand will move further. The minute hand will move further. But they're moving in a way that they come to the same place. They are superimposed. Now, what do I need to do about this? We'll go and look at the question before we do any further processing. This says, select for M and S the values that are consistent. So M minutes and S seconds were talked about and I really have to find them now. So now we'll spend more energy and we'll try to see what this exact time is, M minutes and S seconds, when they superimpose. Before I jump into all of that, Let's just see how they will superimpose. What kind of movement will there have been? So see, my minute hand had started here at the 12 o'clock mark. And it will have moved a certain angle to come till this new position. Similarly, my hour hand, if I draw that in black, this started here at the 3 o'clock mark. And it moved a certain angle to reach the red place. Now, if you notice very carefully, this angle that they're both moving, this is a common part. But this is the starting 90 degree that these two hands have had between each other anyway. Which means if I try to see a connection between the blue angle and the black angle, then blue angle is equal to the black angle, which is my theta, plus 90 degrees. You understand this connection? If I have this connection, I'll try to express what the blue angle is. I'll try to express what the black angle is, and then I'll put them into this equation. Then it'll be just about finding M and S from this. 
If you found the analysis of this data set helpful, then hit that like button so that other GMAT aspirants can also learn from it. And to stay tuned with such content, hit the subscribe button below. Now, to take your learning to the next level, we have put together a free trial in which you can experience content in all the sections tested on GMAT Focus Edition. For example, you can build your CR pre-thinking skills, you can learn how to approach statistics questions in graphics interpretation as part of DI, you can learn everything about linear inequalities as tested on the GMAT Focus Edition and a lot of other content. The link for this is in the description. Now, let's get back to the question at hand. So, what angle this is depends on for how many minutes and seconds the hour and the minute hands have both moved. Why? Because I know both of them have a certain constant rate of moving. Obviously, because a clock always has to work the same way. So, if you think about just the minute hand first, only and only focus about the minute hand. Minute hand, I know, according to the information here, one revolution gets completed in one hour. So, I'll put this here. When I talk about one hour, I'm going 360 degrees because that's a complete revolution. Then how much am I going in these n minutes and s seconds? That's a degree expression that I need to find. Now, instead of thinking about minutes and seconds and doing calculations for them separately, I'll just suppose that this entire time is x minutes. Obviously, this will come in decimals and that decimal part of a minute, I'll convert that to seconds later on. So, x minutes, I have to see what is the total angle that will be moved. So, focus here. 1 hour 360 degrees means in 60 minutes, I'm going 360 degrees, which means every single minute, this hand is going 6 degrees. So if this is for every single minute, then what about x minutes, which is what I took? This then is going to be 6x degrees. And there you already have your blue angle, the minute hand angle. Okay. Now let's think about the hour hand. Again, for this, they have given us information that it's one revolution in 12 hours. And again, revolution is full 360 degrees. So in 12 hours, hours if I'm going 360 degrees, then first of all, I can get it for one hour. In one hour, I'm going 30 degrees. But because I'm interested in minutes, I'll have to look at this as 60 minutes, 30 degrees. So from here, you can get that every minute, the hour hand goes half a degree. So what about X minutes then, which is our time of interest? This is going to be X by two degrees. And here you have your black angle. Now, finally, I'm just going to combine both of these things with this starting relationship I had. At this point, let me ask you this. Could you have arrived at the approach of solving this question with this level of clarity had you not spent the effort in thoroughly understanding the information presented? Such is the power of the process of owning the data set. And because this skill may not come naturally to many of you, we have created a course architecture that ensures that we teach you this skill through every guided quiz in the EGMAT DI course and we reinforce the same in every practice quiz. In fact, in the TPA quant modules in the two-part analysis course, we teach you how to get comfortable with this question type. You will gain the confidence to handle any question of this type in the most efficient manner. We serve more than 58 specially curated questions at the right progression so that you can learn various aspects of this question type, including the process skills of inference, translate and visualize. Thus, throughout the DI course, through around 500 questions, you will learn such process skills so that you can also comfortably use the owning the data set approach. Let's now get back to the solution at hand. Right, let's do this together. So blue, which is 6x, is equal to black, which is x by 2, plus 90. I'll simply solve this equation. This is 11x by 2 is equal to 90. So x is equal to 180 over 11 minutes. This is the time that I am interested in. But my final answer is not in just minutes, it's in minutes and seconds. So I simply need to convert this further on. So I'll take this to my question and I will take the understanding that it's a total of 180 over 11 minutes and I'll simply now have to break it into minutes and seconds. And how do you do that? You just divide your 180 by 11 to get first of all the integer part of this answer. 11 ones are 11, very simple calculations. Once you know what to do, you will see that your complete minutes are 16 here and then you have 4 by 11 of a minute extra. That's the part which will go into seconds. But since I have my minutes first of all, I already have m and I'm going to mark m as 16 here. And now I just need to convert this 4 by 11 into seconds. Well, I have to multiply that by 60 to convert the minutes into seconds. Now you can simply go on the calculator to find 240 by 11. You'll see this is very close to 21.8 and in our choices, if I see, the closest choice is 22 
and I am done. Let's now nicely summarize this question. Very interesting visualization here. We had to think about something that most of us see in our normal life as well. We are talking about just an analog clock, about how the hour hand works, how the minute hand works. We visualize that. We actually confirmed this piece of information that they gave us, but we did not have to. Then we understood that till the point they superimpose, both the minute and the hour hands will have moved a certain angle. By observing the relationship between them, we came up with this very simple equation. After that, we put our energy into finding the blue angle and the black angle. We found them by using the relationships that were given in the very question. Once we found both of these angles, we put them into our equation this way, got our answer in pure minutes. But because we wanted minutes and seconds, we just had to do the conversion. Here, you can put it in your calculator to get 16 point something. It'll tell you that whole minutes are 16. And then the 4 by 11 that's left, that's just to be converted into seconds by multiplication by 60. Calculations are really straightforward, not the main part, once you know what to do. So really own your data set before you jump into answering anything.